All right, all right. Jake? Hey, how's it going, LeVon? Uh, it's going good, man. It's going good. So we don't consider you Jake from State Farm, right? Jake from you, you State not, Farm. We absolutely do. I even wear the khakis most of the time. Oh. I'm available 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's <laughs> up. That is what's up, man. Well, first, I want to thank you for uh, coming on, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of drivers out here that, you know, that, that sort of rely on me to, you know, get some good information for them in their, in their decision process when, when they're coming out, you know, coming out into this industry. And I appreciate you coming on to the podcast. So. Well, I appreciate you having us. I mean, it's it's exciting to get in front of a a viewer base and, and, Tell everybody what we're doing here. All right, that's what's up. Well, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get this started right quick. Okay. So let's get this started. What's going on, guys? This is Lockout Men, and I am right here in the truck, back on the road, fresh off of a four. Well, actually, it was a three day because I got back on the road last night. Almost had some situ. Well, actually, there was a situation. Got to the receiver last night, or got to the shipper last night, and they, uh, yeah, they they helped me th- help me up there for a minute, and then get on the road only to get held up for about another four and a half hours because of a major accident. But uh, hopefully, ho- hopefully those drivers that was in that uh, that was in that accident, I hope they are all right. Um, but uh, it is what it is out here. You know, it's a it's a it's a dangerous game when we get out here in this driving world. Well, I would like to bring on this one recruiting company. Let's let's see what this recruiting company is about. I already had the video set. We about to go ahead and watch this quick video. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Center Mass. Center Mass Recruiting. And the person I have on the line is the director of Center Mass Recruiting, Jake Zeke. 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 <laughs> Zeke. Zeke. Jake Zeke. Yes, sir. What's going on, brother man? How you feel? You know what? I feel pretty good. How are you doing today? I am doing all right. I'm doing all right. Like I said, like I said in the intro, you know, I kind of got into some uh, some situations last night. You know, I was supposed to be actually I was supposed to be in Alabama right now, but you know, the shipper the shipper held me up, and the and that accident, that major accident, that actually shut down both sides of 71 here in Ohio. Well, I'm not here in Ohio, but it was in it was in Ohio, and it shut down uh, both north and southbound lanes uh, because of the accident. It was it was it was real horrible last night. So, you you know, as horrible as that accident is, do I mean, tell me this: wouldn't it be a lot better if that's the only headache that you had to deal with? You, Just traffic and getting somewhere on time. You know, I I wish it was the only headache that uh, that us drivers face out here, man. I mean, it's so much, it's so much, it's so much stuff that drivers face out here, man. That makes us stressful. It's 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 crazy. It is crazy. You know, and and that's exactly why we exist. You know, there's 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 about 150 other third party recruiting companies out there that uh, that basically all they do is they get your butts in a seat, they slap a barcode on you, and send you on your way. Pretty much. And you don't have any follow-up. You're just stuck with that carrier. No matter what that carrier does, you're at the mercy of them. And so that's that's the difference between us and everyone else. Uh, we, we're a full-service RPO. All right. You know, we, we work in the same fashion as a lot of other people. We get your apps off, you know, trucking reports, uh, short forms, you know, whatever leads. Mm-hmm. You can come to our website and drop us an Intelli app. We use some of the standard systems across the board. Mm-hmm. But where we differentiate ourselves is from the moment that we talk to you, the moment you actually start driving for us okay. so we have anywhere from 10 to 22 carriers in our network at any, at any point in time and we're always growing we're always expanding i'm always finding the best places for drivers to stay. Now, now let me ask you this let, let me ask you this mm-hmm. about center mass right quick now you say drive you yep. you you mentioned driving for you so technically yep. we so technically the drivers will be 
employed by you and you guys are sent to and send the drivers out to uh to the people in your network so we will be getting paid by you guys right not not exactly so you still under the fmcsa you know guidelines you still have to be employed under that carrier we're not a staffing agency okay. we're not well, so you're not working for us and getting paid for them and so we do that because you get all the benefits of that carrier Okay. You know, for instance, medical, life, health, dental, everything that you need through them, you get your full pay. You don't have to depend on, you know, a second step to get your pay. You don't have to depend on a second set of people to get things taken care of. We thought about doing it that way, but it just didn't make sense. Okay. And so when I say that the drivers drive for us, what I mean is we're that driver's agent. When you get on a phone call with one of my recruiters on our floor, that recruiter is not going to treat you like every other recruiter in the industry. Right. They're not just going to do whatever it takes to get you in a seat and then say, best of luck. Okay. We're going to take the time. We fill out every driver's application, every single one. Regardless of whether you filled out an application, a full Intelli app or not, we're going to go through and we're going to fill it out on our end because we are in the industry. We are dealing with the processors. We are dealing with the carriers on a day-to-day -day basis, and we know what they're looking for. So we'll make sure that we word everything in the proper way. You know, instead of saying, you know, you, you quit this job because your dispatcher was a jerk. You know, we're going to go, hey, let's, let's step back for a moment. Let's reword this. Let's say we're looking for a better work opportunity. We're going to word it in a way that makes sense. So that carrier is going to talk to you and you're going to look like the golden egg driver, the best driver that you possibly can be. And so they're not going to have a reason to question, to roll you down and to dock your pay every chance they get. Okay. Okay. So you, you <laughs> mentioned, you mentioned in your bio right here that you, uh, that you sent <laughs> to me. Uh, thank you, by the way. Um, <laughs> of course. So the center, ma center mass uh, mm -hmm. is located out of Utah, right? Salt Lake City, Utah. Yes, sir. Salt Lake U City, Utah. How long? How long you guys been in existence? Well, um, we've actually been in existence since um, our two owners and operators, uh, Ken Teasdale and Nick Moss, mm -hmm. um, started this. They actually started this in a basement in April. Um, so April of last year was when they started actually putting foot to the door, really, really working on this, and. Uh, it, that doesn't say that we don't have the experience from it. Um, Nick, in particular, has been the vice president of recruiting for two major companies. Okay. Major companies. I'm not going to throw their name out there, exactly. but they weren't the best. Let's put it that way. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, it, it, they were mega carriers. That wasn't exactly you know what you want to put your name behind, but he knows his business, mm -hmm. and he knows his business inside and out. And, his, and he's also a veteran. And because he had that integrity, he had a hard time staying within that industry for longevity. And so he decided that he was going to launch out. He's going to do something different. We have veterans in mind. We have drivers in mind. Drivers are athletes. Okay. You know, there's no other way to put it out there. You guys drive long hours. You work hard, and you get the TP that we use to wipe our butts every day. Right. right. And without, without you a guys, lot of, we wouldn't have the commodities that we have. And a, and a lot of people don't appreciate that. It's crazy. No, they don't. It's crazy how many people that don't really appreciate what what we do and what we bring to this uh, industry. You know exactly. I mean, we see and you don't have a voice. We we see we see it every day with with the with the demeanor that we get treated at the shippers and receivers. We see it every day with the demeanor uh, how we get treated on the road. Uh, we see it every day when we when we interact with people. You know, they just think that they just think that we drivers are like 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 second class citizens, like you know the the dark stepchild or something like that. But what they don't understand that, you know, and I know it sounds cliche, and every every driver says it, including myself. But it literally, when when the truck stops, the world stops. But they can come back and say, oh well. Well, we still got airplanes and we still got boats and we still got trains. But, yo, what do you think that's the link that that's between the boats and the receivers or these warehouses? Where's the what's the link between the trains and the and the warehouses? What's the link between the I mean, what's the link between uh, what I say, boats, trains, planes. What's the link <laughs> between them and the warehouses? Well, how many airports have you seen at every Walmart? Uh, exactly. <laughs> you see truckers. You see those trucking bays. You see those guys in and out at all hours of the day, twenty-four hours a day. The trucking industry runs all holidays, 
all days, whether it's rain, whether it's shine, it does not matter. Truckers are on the road and they're pushing out there. Like I said, they are professional athletes. They drive longer. They drive harder. They have better stamina than 90% of the population that drives. Mm -hmm. And so why not treat them as such? And that's, that's the decision that we made here. Every one of our drivers, if they are a qualified driver and they have a reasonable set of standards, we will do the best that we can to absolutely match them with a carrier that fits their needs. Okay, that's we don't cool. Play this, yeah, we don't play this game of, you know what, I need to fill seats here. You know, I've got a commitment to fill, you know, 10 seats here. I'm going to push every single driver no matter where they're at over here. No, we don't play that game. We play the game of this driver needs A, B, and C. We can fill A, B, and most of C. Will this work for you? Okay. Because there's there's no carrier out there that's going to match every single need of every driver. Because if, if you ask any driver what their, their perfect job is, it's Monday through Friday. They get their home time. They get paid 2000 a week. At least. That's, at, at least. <laughs> that's, 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 that, that's the perfect. But, when, exactly. we, we're, we're, but where does that exist? Where, where, it. Does it, where does it exist? You know, here. Oh, and, and no touch. Here, here, here you got to, <laughs> here you say, uh, 3.5 million truckers in the industry and they change jobs an average of three times, three times per year. Uh, That's correct. You said that uh, every drive, you said every time a driver change, change a job, they lose value and the industry mm -hmm. has become dependent on, on this. And in turn, they treat, you know, us drivers as tools. Uh, where, right. where, where do you, that you you feel that that is the average because drivers do change change jobs uh, you know maybe three or four times uh four times to try to find that perfect home for them how do you yes. how do you guys come into play to make sure they can find that perfect job so they won't have to so they won't have to job jump too much well well let's just take you for example you're driving right now right mm-hmm mm-hmm that's your job. You make money while you're driving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you need to keep rolling as much as possible. Every minute of every day, every hour that you have to drive, you need to continue to do that. Now imagine you go out and you start looking for a job. That's going to take up time. Mm -hmm. That's going to take up your downtime. Mm -hmm. You know, in your 34 hour reset, you don't want to be sitting there checking emails, calling recruiters and, and trying to fish and find out what's going to work best for you. Do you? Right. Right. I agree. Uh, I agree. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. We fill out that. Like I said, we fill out that application. We find what works. We ask you questions like, what do you need? What is your home time need? What is your pay range? What are you looking for? What do you need to survive? What is the perfect job for you? And if we can fill it, would you take it? You know, there's, there's those questions that we ask because we want drivers to really look in, inward and go, well, this is what carriers are offering, so I'll settle for that. No, I want to know what you actually want. And then once you take that job, I'm going to set you with that carrier. And during the course of that action, I'm going to set a career plan for you. I have premier carriers that take on perfect drivers. They take on drivers that don't, that, you know, have perfect DAX, that have perfect PSPs, but those are few and far between. Yeah. So let's get you in a, let's get you in a place to where you can feel comfortable. You can drive with a company that's not going to treat you like garbage that has planned three week dispatch. And so you're going to have to deal with things. Never, everything doesn't work perfect, but they do their best to make sure that you're rolling as much as possible. Okay. And then you stay with that company for a year, a year and a half, 18 months. You know, at that point, your value has gone up exponentially, and I can sell you to that premier carrier, and I can go, hey, LeVon right here, he's been working hard for me for 18 months, solid. He's been with the same company the entire time. Mm -hmm. Here's his value. What do you have to offer for him? And I'm going to work as that Jerry Maguire sports agent on the back end, and I'm going to go, no, it's not the right time. Call me when you need a good driver. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's good. up. That Jerry McGuire, that that's that Jerry yeah. McGuire vibe going on. Show me the money. I got, I got you. Show me the money. I got exactly. you, bro. Okay, I got you. I'm feeling you, man. I, 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 I like how I, I like how you go to work for the, uh, go to work for, for the, the driver. driver and not and not looking out for yourself to just try to get the driver in the seat just to get that commission. So I yeah, like absolutely. how you, I like how you turn around and and um. And put that extra oomph, you know, and that and, that, and that's that Jerry Maguire vibe because he put that exactly. You know, it's it's unfortunately that he only had the one client because he lost all his <laughs> clients, but he still he put that he put that extra one hundred percent 
into uh, into making sure that his client was all right. So exactly. And I act like every single driver that I have is my only client. Okay. That's why I succeeded. And that's why I am. That's why I'm the director of recruiting here. My brand is the most important thing to me at center map. Okay. My brand is the most drivers are the most important. I don't have a single driver that I have hired over the course of this last year that I don't talk to on a weekly basis, whether it's to go over something that's going wrong, whether it's going over, you know, just to make sure that everything is all right. I check in with those guys and make sure that they're rolling. I know their personal lives. Sometimes those drivers stop in in Salt Lake and we go and eat lunch together. Okay. You know, these are my drivers. They are they are my guys, and I treat them as family, and I treat them as gold every single time. And every single one of my recruiters on this floor does the same thing. Okay. What about uh? What about what about experience? What what experience you looking <laughs> you you looking to bring on? What's what's the uh, amount of experience that uh that a driver needs to come on with Center Mass? You know, the, the perfect opportunity, if I, could, if I could pick my drivers, I would pick drivers that are fresh out of school, <laughs> okay. and, I would, and I would get them in a career straight out from it. But drivers that have been out on the road, you know what? I want good 12 months of OTR experience. I only recruit for OTR. I have regional positions that open up, but I only do OTR. The reason that I do OTR is because that's where the money's at. That's where the work is. You, I you, can, well, I, let you me, hold on. I, I, let, let, let me play devil's advocate on that. Let me let me Perfect. let me throw in uh, let me throw in the curveball right here. You mm-hmm. you 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 think that's what some and I I don't know I I I don't know I mean sometimes you can find the you can sometimes you can find the money in local. It's just a little yep. it's just a little bit more hard work. Correct. But but. Uh, I you know I I don't know what 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 makes you say that well what makes you feel that OTR is where the money at? Do you spend three years at one company in OTR? I could place you in any local or regional position that exists. Okay. If you have the endorsements for it. Okay. Because that means that you've put in the time, you understand how to drive, you know your equipment, you're responsible. And you're going to show up on time. You know what the biggest problem with local deliveries is? What's what's the biggest problem? Ten o'clock on Monday. Mm-hmm. Ten o'clock on Monday, those drivers come home from a weekend, and inexperienced drivers come out and they go, "Oh, I'm, I'm running late," and they're five minutes late to the terminal. And they're just getting into their truck, getting warmed up, and getting moving. Mm-hmm. That's a huge issue for local. And there's no driver out there that can tell me any different. They've all seen it. Are there phenomenal drivers that are in local? Absolutely. And they work their butts off and they work really, really hard and they do those things that make them extremely valuable. But local, it, that's an experience. That's a, that's a promotion in, in our view because look at it. Look at it. If you're an OTR driver, you put in the work. Mm-hmm. You know what life is like out there, and you're going to value that local position that much more. You're going to value that home time. You're going to value that time that you get to spend with your family. You're going to value those weekends. Okay. Okay. So for me, so for me, I look at it as you know what? If I can get an OCR driver and I can get him to commit and I can get him to really work hard, then there's going to be local positions. There's going to be regional positions that I'm going to call him about at some point during his career. And we go, hey, I found that job you were looking for. Are you ready to be home on the weekends? Not only is he going to jump on it, but he's also going to not take a pay cut because I'm going to put him in a valuable position. Okay, that's what's up. Okay, now makes sense. okay, that makes plenty of sense. That that definitely <laughs> makes plenty of sense. All right, Jake. So so being a so being an independent recruiter, man, uh, you got drivers out here that got some scrimmage backgrounds. What what what, what do you what what can you do for them? You know, drivers that has a. Uh, that are that are felons that's looking to get into the industry, drivers that got DUIs or DWIs uh, that's looking to get into the industry. What what can you do for them? You know, I'm I'm not gonna lie that those are difficult situations, but there is no driver that's gonna call me that I'm gonna tell them, no, you got a DUI. No, I'm gonna dig into it. I'm gonna see what happens. You know, I'm going to build a story around it. I'm going to say, you know what? This guy had a DUI in 2005. It was a mistake. He served his time. Everything's been taken out. He's re-gotten his CDL. He's re-gotten his hazmat. You know, whatever the case may be on that story. And you know what? I'm going to work to put him in a position. Do I have carriers that refuse to look at DUIs? Absolutely. 
that's that's the industry. That's how, that's how it works. If they have an opportunity to say no and take a more qualified person, they will. There's 3.5 million of us out there. Mm-hmm. And so we have to we have to build that story and we have to make that application look the, as good as possible. A lot of these guys, they're truckers, man. They know how to drive a truck. They know how to drive a truck really, really well. Mm-hmm. I know how to build an application. I know how to build a resume. I know how to build that really, really well. So I take your profession and I take my profession and I marry those two together and I get you in a place that works. Okay. Now, there are felons out there that I can't help with. You know, there's distribution. Mm-hmm. There's there's different things that the industry just looks at it from an insurance purpose right. because we all know that insurance runs the trucking industry. And, and so we have exactly, to look at the situation. Exactly, and, they do. And, and that's that's yeah. another that that's another that's another issue in itself. Mm-hmm. Completely different issue in of itself, but it is. And and so there are some things that no, I, I can't help you with. But hey, I'm not going to throw any names out there, and I'm not going to throw a carrier on the book. But I have actually hired a uh, a felon who had a manslaughter charge. Okay. Okay. And so I will put in the work. I will do what I can, and I'll build that story, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll look at this. I believe in reform. I believe in it wholeheartedly. I'm a veteran. I've been in the oil field. I've been working you know, with felons and with uh, people that had shady past my entire life. Okay. And so the, some of those people are some of the best people that just made mistakes, and that's how we view it here. We look at people not by your past, but by who you are right here on the phone right now. We will treat you like gold no matter who you are. We don't play the race card. We don't play the religion card. We don't play the politics card. We don't play any of those things. We talk to you as a human being to a human being to get you in a position that works for you. All right, that sounds good, right there, man. That sounds good. You sound like you, you sound like uh, you've been doing this for uh, you. You've been doing this for quite a while, man. How long you been in the business? How, how long you been doing what you're doing? I have been at this business since November. Okay. And that is it. And the reason that I'm able to speak like this and really talk about this is because I believe in it. When, when you brought about me in it. for my interview, it's real. It's, it's so real. And I'm able to help people. And like I said, I talk to all of my drivers. I talk to them. I'm able to help them get to that second point in their career. You know, we had a, a major carrier malfunction. One of our carriers that we had just filed for bankruptcy and just shuttered his doors. Okay. That was one of our carriers in our network. You you want to you you, you want to you you want to mention the name on that or no? I don't really. I'm not really worried about it. It was cold carriers. Okay. Okay. Interride, Gant, and Sunco. Um, and so they they shuttered their doors. They treated their drivers really well too. They did everything right. They had a severance package. They treated everybody like gold. We can't really fault them for that. You know, some things happened on the back end. It happens. But they treated their drivers really, really well. We were able to place nine out of ten of our drivers that we had placed with Interride mm-hmm. with other carriers within our network immediately. Okay, that's cool. So they wouldn't have to be out of uh, you know, be out of work that long. What's the No, we worked extra hours. What's what's the uh <laughs> what's what's the interview process is like with you guys? I mean, like, you know, when you when one of your recruiters call, you know, cold calls a person, uh, do the rec- well, let me ask you this. Do the recruiter at like, uh, at like a recruiter there to try to get you in, and then there's an interviewer that they switch over, or do the recruiter both do both interview and uh, recruit? But so we don't have interviewers, we don't have recruiters. Like I said, you know, I call them recruiters because that's just the industry known, but they're agents. Okay. And so when you get on the phone, that's your agent. So if you talk to Jordan, you talk to Tessa, you talk to Alex, you talk to me, whoever you talk to, that person is going to take you from point A to hire. And then they're going to call you once a week after that. Okay. And so we, we don't shuffle around. We don't try to, and there are times where my agents, they, they struggle. They have a driver that's a little bit stubborn and you know, I'll jump on the phone and I'll talk to that driver and I'll, and I'll, you know, I'll work on the clothes, make sure they understand what we do. But I never close a driver on a job. Mm -hmm. I close them on us, on what we're going to do for them for their career. A job can come and go. You could go get a new job right now without me. I have no qualms about that. I understand that every driver could do that. There are better offers out there. Mm -hmm. And when a driver comes to me and says, hey, I got a better offer on the table than what you can offer me. I'm not going to tell that driver, well, are you sure? Okay. I'm going to go, you know what? That's awesome, man. I'm going to you here support you. Let me put your application on file. So if in the event that that doesn't work, 
you got somebody to call and I'm going to continue working for you. Okay. We care about our drivers. It money's going to come in our paychecks. We're going to happen. Like I said, there's 3.5 million truckers out there. And I, if I talk to 65,000 a year and that's all I talk to, I'm not even scratching the industry, but I'm paying my bills. So it's not a matter of paying my bills and making sure that I'm getting that commission and living in a million dollar house. What matters to me is the personal connection between me and my drivers. Like I said, my drivers come and visit me. We eat lunch. I know them. I know their family problems. I know what's going on with them. I know when they're taking vacations. I know when they have an issue with their pay because I take care of it. Okay. You know, it, it's that's the other side of what we do. It's like actually having it's, it's like it's like having a union, but not not a union. You actually got somebody on your side right. to uh, to help you rectify with any problems that you may or may not have in this uh, in the industry or in the or in the company that they put you with. You guys is exactly. you guys is out of Utah, right? That's correct. So the, the so the so the range that you guys could bring drivers in, you you bring them in from all forty eight, or is there is there all a cut in, is there a cut off or anything like that? All forty eight. I mean, Maine's a little bit difficult, but other, and Southern Florida is a little bit difficult, but other than that, all forty eight. Okay, okay. So out of uh, so let me ask you this. Um, when 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 you marry the driver and the company, uh, mm-hmm. the the driver don't don't come up don't come up to Utah. The driver will actually go to the company that they go into orientation with, right? Absolutely, and we make sure that they have their travel, understand their travel, and are able to get from point A to point B. All right. Now let me ask you this: Now, when the driver gets to that company, and let's just say that. Let's just say that the that the bond between the driver and that company doesn't doesn't mesh well. Um, some companies, you know, they they they'll provide transportation to the uh, orientation, but whatever case, they don't provide transportation back. Do you guys step in and help that driver get get back home if need be? Within reason, um, you know. I, there, there are certain situations to where, you know, I really just can't help. Um, you know, for instance, you know, some of our, some of our orientations that you have out in the trucking industry, they don't do, you know, their verifications of employment. They don't do their, their drug screens or anything until they're in orientation. Right, you right. know, if I have a driver, if I have a driver fail a drug screen, I can't help you, man. Exactly. I mean, that, that's, exactly. You know, there's, there's, there's certain cutoffs that we have to do, you know, to provide the level of service that we provide to our drivers there are certain things that when we have to just cut off the low hanging fruit, be like, come on, man, you're just going to have to get it together and then call us in a year and we'll see what we can do. You no, know, I, and I don't understand why, you know, I'm in, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups and that mm-hmm. is the question that be popping up in so many Facebook groups. And I'm just sitting here reading, reading the comments and reading the posts. Like really, I mean, why, why are you coming on here to try to find out a way to, to magically, pass your drug screen you can pass it just by not doing nothing at all you know what i'm saying exactly and if you know driver and if you know that (laughs) and if you know that you got you know some remnants or some remnant remnants in inside you you should before you even go you should tell them like yo give me about give me about two weeks three weeks or something like that you know you you don't have to you don't have to be truthful you can like bend the truth a little bit you i'm sure you're not going to come out of the box and say oh well you know i've been smoking weed all day and um and uh and you know with 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 that we um right with with that you know i uh i'm going to come out there and 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 try to pass a drug test because you know I I got this herbal supplement that I can do. This right. just don't just you know, don't do it. Just don't do it. Have some common courtesy. Let me know. You know that's the thing. She's gonna say, hey, you know, I need to schedule this for three weeks out. I'll make you commit. You know, and that's one of the things that, that that I pride myself on is if I tell you that I'm gonna get you into an orientation date, I'll get you into that orientation date. But you better show up. Mm-hmm. Get on the plane, get on the bus, get on whatever we booked for you to get you there. And if you show up and you get there, I will make sure that I do everything in my power to make sure that you get hired. But at the same time, have some common courtesy for me. If you know you're going to fail something, 
don't pretend like it's a surprise when it happens and then expect me to do Small something about weed it. Every day. I mean, you, I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's what that's, I mean, it's crazy. It, it's crazy how that, that simple thing right there could, 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 could be a roadblock for every potential driver, you know I mean? And they should, they should already know that the first, the, the first day when they get an orientation, they're gonna get they're gonna get drug tested, right off the rip. Yeah, absolutely, they're gonna get drug tested right off the rip, and it's 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 it's, it's crazy how many how, yeah, how many of them out there that that just don't see it that way. You know, and it's amazing how many of those same guys would look at a guy that gets a steroid charge in professional baseball and be like, why was he even playing? He knew better. Exactly. You know, you are a professional athlete. I will treat you as a professional athlete. Like I said, the entirety of this call, our drivers are the most important thing to us. And we will treat you with the value that you have. But you've also got to treat yourself in that situation that, hey, I am a valuable person. This is what I need to do. I need to do A, B, and C to continue to raise my value. All right. You know, if you don't play ball, if you're not getting up to bat and hitting the ball, <laughs> they're going to put you off the team. And so be on time. Be as honest as you possibly can with me. And we won't have any problems. All right. So Cinemas, located out of uh, located out of Utah, man. Let's, I'm on uh, I'm on uh, I'm on your website right quick, checking out your you guys leadership. Uh, Nicholas Moss, he's he's the president. You got uh, Kenneth, Jacob, Rick. Jacob Zico. Is that your brother? That's me. Oh, that's you. Oh, look at look <laughs> that's at, me. Look at that guy. Look at look, look at that guy. That's who you be. Get, that's who you guys will be dealing with. That man right there. Then you got Kurt and uh, Mackenzie. Mackenzie. So, so Mackenzie is actually a part of a, a different staffing portion that we have. Okay, but she is absolutely one hundred percent part of the Cinemas family as well. All right, all right. Uh, I see. Uh, I see the mission statement. I see that you guys is one hundred percent focus. Uh, focus on the driver. So that's that's one good mm-hmm. thing about uh, about these recruiters, and I, I'm I'm beginning to feel that, uh, you know, I I know recruiters from these big companies, uh, you know, they probably might be the best best place to go to. But some of these independent recruiters kind of remind me of like mom and pop, uh, mom and pop service stations. You know, they give you mm-hmm. they give you uh, they they don't look for quantity they look for quality you know they're they're not look they're not looking to tell you they're not looking to tell you or put you know whatever what you want to hear and to hurry up and try to get you in a try to get you in a seat so i'm I'm beginning to feel a lot of these uh independent recruiters you know they 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 the jerry they they beginning to be the jerry mcguire's of uh uh, of the industry, and you guys been popping up for quite a while. I talked to a few. I talked to a few so far, and I'm I'm beginning to think, you know, if any of you drivers out there that's inter- in, interested in coming into the industry, try giving uh, an independent recruiter a try first before you know you decided to uh, go with some of these companies because the the companies, you know, their recruiting department is is only there just to get you in the seat and then forget about you how do you feel let me ask you this how do you feel about uh how do you feel about um sign on bonus and do you guys uh do you guys offer it with some of the companies that that uh that you're connected with so sign on bonuses are 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 a double-edged sword in the industry uh what you end up getting so they're they're the sign-on bonuses from the carrier perspective, um, you just have to make sure that you understand exactly what they're going to offer. You know, they're going to tell you that you're going to get a payout at 90 days, at 120 days, or they're going to tell you that you're going to get it all up front. And those carriers are depending on that driver to commit to them. Mm-hmm. And so I, from our perspective, I let our carriers handle their sign-on bonuses in the way that they want, in the way that they want to go about that, because that's really none of my business. Your sign-on bonus is between you and them, and that's a contract between you and that carrier. Am I going to try to you know, get them to give you the maximum sign-on bonus they possibly can? Absolutely, because I'm going to paint that picture in your resume and in your application that you are the perfect driver for this, and there's no reason that you shouldn't treat this driver like gold. But I can't control a lot of those situations, and I, and I have no business controlling a lot of those situations, if that makes sense. Okay, but how, did, but how do you – how? 
how do you feel about uh about sign on bonuses? Because my my I think they're well deserved. My 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 take my my take is is that companies that offer an extenuous amount of uh sign on bonus to me <laughs> is a problem company. Like their they they their retention their their retention for their drivers is low. You know, why why are you offering, you know, ten ten thousand, fifteen, you know, fifteen uh thousand, twenty thousand, mm-hmm. you know, and the payout and the payout for that amount of money is like maybe about a year, two years, or sometimes three mm-hmm. years down the line to even get all that money. And the companies know that they can when they get you on, they know that you're coming on for the sign on bonus. And they know that they mm-hmm. can get treated, you know, treated messy, you know, be, and they know that you're right. going to stay because of the sign on bonus. They, and that's why that's never. So that's why the job is never a selling point for me. So you'll never have and a driver will never call me and speak to me personally and hear about the job. They're going to hear about what I'm going to do for them. They're going to hear about how I'm going to take care of them. And then I'm going to tell them what job is best for them based on their needs and their wants. And I'm going to put them in that place because I know for a fact that I have married them to the perfect place that fits everything that checks boxes, A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. If I go in and I start selling, selling you, you know, I say, Hey, I got a, I got a company that's got a $10,000 sign on bonus and they're going to pay it out at 90 days. You know, that just, that just sounds like I'm just trying to get you in a seat. Okay. That's all it is. What am I going to do for you? I'm going to get you a sign on bonus. And then what? What happens after that? Nothing. And so my job is to build a career. A sign-on bonus is a small part of a career. Yeah, it's a great bonus. Sometimes it'll help you, you know, have a little bit better of a Christmas. But a consistent job that pays you well consistently and treats you as a valuable athlete that you are, that's more valuable than any sign-on bonus out there. And I I, pre- I appreciate that, man. That that is uh I appreciate that. That is that is that is real good to look out uh to look out for. Cause like I said, mm-hmm. I, I tell some of the drivers out here, man, like yo, just look at the sign-on bonus as as an incentive. That's that's basically what it is to me. Because a sign-on, if somebody offer a sign-on bonus, they say, hey, uh, hey, lockout. Uh, we're gonna offer you two thousand dollars for a sign-on bonus. Okay, I'm getting that in orientation when I sign on the dotted line. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. not not coming in and say, "Oh, okay, well, we're gonna this uh two thousand dollar sign-on bonus." But in in order to get it, you gotta drive a certain amount of miles every month, and then <laughs> you gotta dr- go through hoops in order to get it. There ain't no sign-on bonus. You know exactly. And that's and that's why, like I said, I never sell the job. I sell the career because if I got you in a place where you're making consistent money and you're paying your bills, if and when that sign-on bonus hits your account, you're gonna be like, hey, a little bit extra. That's what's up. You know, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit of icing on the top of that already beautiful cake that I that I <laughs> got laid out in front of you, ready to eat. That is, you know, I'm not sitting here. I, I'm not like I said. I don't sell these jobs. I don't sell my carriers. My carriers are good carriers, and I believe in them. And I have contracts with them, and I make sure that they treat my drivers correctly. But my drivers are always going to be my priority. And if something happens and that driver needs something else, I'm never going to stand in their way. I'm going to make sure that they're developing their career the entire time. I'll give them the best advice that I can, and I'll shake hands on it, and I'll call you in a week. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> was, was, well, uh, man, man, man. Damn it, man! That's uh, I'm I'm liking that uh I'm liking that Jake Jake from State Farm. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jake from uh, Center Mass uh, Recruiting and Staffing, located out in uh out in Utah. Let me uh let me Utah. let me see if I can let me see if I can bring back up the. There we go. You can reach us at uh, www.centermassrecruit.com. All right. Or you can just give us a straight call. You can call in right now at 1-833-781-8347. Our recruiters are literally sitting here right now on the call with other drivers. But if you call us inbound, we'll make sure that you're the priority. Well, that's what's up, man. Look like you guys also have a a clip. Look like you guys have a Facebook page. Uh, Yeah, my my, – Unfortunately, my internet is running slow. But yes, they got <laughs> they do have a Facebook page. They also has a they also has LinkedIn. 
uh, right here, mm-hmm. and that's uh, Center Mass Staffing. So you guys, they're they're located um, they're located all over the web. So LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and as well as uh, as as well as a YouTube page as well. So um, that's correct. You, def- you guys could definitely go and check them out. Um, you get uh, you guys could definitely go and uh, check them out while you're there. Give them, you know, hit them up with a subscribe or something like that. Uh, Center Mass Recruiting. I, I think this is a, I think this is a good company to uh, start with. If you guys is interested in coming into the field and y'all having uh, having a little bit of trouble with with the majors out there, then come come and uh, get these guys a try. Jacob, man, thank you for stopping by and uh, telling a little bit about uh, a little bit about uh, Center Mass Recruiting, man. I really do appreciate you. Absolutely. All right, all right. You are now you're now part of the LOM community, man. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. And if you guys, hey, if if this like this recruiter right here, he he came on to the podcast, and you know we're sitting down chopping it up, promoting the business, and shooting the shit. That's what we do. If you guys want to come on and and holler at your boy, don't forget to. I mean, you can get at me at LockedOutMenPodcast at gmail.com, as well as you can look over at Instagram and get at me in the DM. Jake from State Farm slash Cinemass Recruiting, <laughs> thank you very much for showing up and showing out, man. I really do appreciate it, man. You, you, uh, you have a blessed day, and you uh, stay safe out there. Absolutely. Thank you very much, LaVon, and we will be following you guys for sure. And uh, if there's any questions or anything else that you'd like to get some info, you've got my email. And once again, you can reach it at centermasterrecruit.com, or you can give us a call at our 833 number. Exactly. Thanks a lot, brother, man. You take it easy. And and I, and and for that, we're done. We are out. You guys have a blessed day, and I will come back at you guys with another podcast interview. Until then, y'all stay safe out there. Peace.